There's a quote from the infamous Henry Kissinger. If you control the food, you control a nation. If you control the energy, you control a region. But if you control the money, you control the world. And let's not forget, Henry Kissinger was the mentor for the head of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab himself. Was there a course, a professor, who really made that difference for you? Yes, uh, there was um, one course, one seminar of um, Henry Kissinger, um, which really opened my eyes. We all know how the global elite never let a good crisis go to waste. And I think they are going to take this current banking crisis and use it to roll out a central bank digital currency, not only to control your money, but to control your life. I'm going to explain this to you in three simple, fast steps. Step number one, let's go over a shocking chart that shows we are just getting started as far as the current crisis we are living through. We go all the way back to 2007, all the way to today's date, 2023. On the left, we go from zero billion up to $160 billion. This is the discount window at the Federal Reserve. So what is the discount window? This is just a facility at the Fed that the banks can use when they really, really get into trouble and they can't find liquidity anywhere else. The Fed charges them a very high interest rate, but they can pledge almost any garbage collateral they have. And the problem with going to the discount window is it comes with a huge stigma. So if the bank uses the discount window, all the other banks know about it. So once they get the funding they need, well, that may be a short-term fix, but then if they go back into the market, then no other entities want to do business with them because they know that that bank was on the brink of going bust. That's why they went to the discount window in the first place. So once the bank uses the discount window, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So they will avoid this at all costs. Okay, why does this matter? Let's go right back to the GFC. And we can see how much the discount window was being utilized back then to the tune of about $120 billion. Okay, let's give another comparison. We see during the Cervasa sickness, it was used about 55 or $60 billion. But just the other day, it went all the way up to almost $160 billion. Approximately $40 billion more than we saw during the GFC. And if we're to use this chart as a proxy for the health of the overall banking system, right now, you would assume it's on life support. And trust me, if I know this, Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum, the IMF, the central planners and authoritarians that want to control your life know this as well. And they're just sitting back in the shadows, just waiting for that next good crisis to play out. Step number two. Now, I know a lot of you have seen the problems these banks have been having in the news. Silicon Valley Bank went bust. Shares in Credit Suisse plunged to a record low. Deutsche Bank tumbling this morning in European trading. And you've said to yourself, well, this thing is most likely in the rear view mirror. The Fed, the central planners, authoritarians, they solved the problem. Not even close. In my opinion, we are only in inning two of this crisis. We've got a long way to go. Let me tell you what I'm referring to. Let's go to a chart going all the way back to 1980 to today's date. On the left, we go from, we'll say from 0% up to 3% and then down to negative 3%. So this chart is the 10-year treasury yield minus the two-year treasury yield. And most of you know that in a healthy economy, when things are going well, the interest rate on a 10-year treasury should be higher than a two-year. But what we have seen recently is an inversion where the 10-year yield goes below the two-year. So when the two-year yield is higher than the 10-year, then the line on the chart would go negative. 
But what I want you to really focus on are the times of recession. We'll call it when the stuff hits the fan. <laughs> That's a technical term, just so you know. Well, the first time the stuff hit the fan, we'll say early 80s, I want you to look at when the curve went from inverted back to, we'll call it uninverted. I know it's not a word, <laughs> but basically when it steepens out and the curve is no longer inverted. So editor, go ahead and throw this up or highlight this, please. This was right at the beginning of the recession. Now we fast forward to 1990, and then we look at 2001, we look at the GFC, and we look at the Cervasa sickness, and you'll notice that curve became uninverted just before the recession, depression, black swan, financial crisis, whatever you want to call it. I prefer when the stuff hits the fan, <laughs> or when the stuff hit the fan in the past. So the question becomes, okay, well, where are we now? All right. Well, you can see that recently the curve has inverted. And when I say recently, I mean about nine months ago. But what we've seen over the past month or few weeks is that the curve is starting to steepen. And it's steepening in a very bad way. What I mean by that is it's not steepening by the 10-year Treasury yield going up. It's steepening by the two-year Treasury yield going down and down in a dramatic fashion, especially when you consider the fact that just a few weeks ago, the delta between the two yields was over 100 basis points. Now, it's right around 40, and it's going right back up to that point or just like we've seen in the past, we go into, we'll call it the no bueno zone, <laughs> another technical term. When the curve is no longer inverted, that's when you see the biggest impact from the financial or economic storm. And to be very clear, it hasn't happened yet. It didn't happen when we saw the problems with Silicon Valley Bank, Signature, Credit Suisse, and now Deutsche Bank. If history is a teacher, it shows us that this economic storm or this financial tsunami that's coming at us at 500 miles per hour will hit the shore in the very near future. So how will the global elite leverage this crisis to roll out a central bank digital currency to not only control your money, but control your life? We're going to answer that question throughout the rest of this video. Step number three, let me ask you a question. What is the price of safety and security? Answer, according to the central planners, it's your freedom. Let me show you exactly what I'm referring to. Right now, most people out there, and we'll refer to them as your friend and family member Fred, have no idea how the banking system works. In fact, he is standing right there in front of you with his six pack and his vape pen. <laughs> and he is feeling good. You can tell he's cross-eyed, his eyes are bloodshot, and he doesn't know what he's doing. He just got his paycheck. He just went down to his local bank, we'll call it Wells Fargo, and he just deposited his check into the bank. And what he thinks is the bank just kind of takes his money and just puts it in a vault and waits for him to come back and get it. Or if he needs to transfer that money to pay some bills, the bank just goes in the vault and just somehow magically gets his currency units to the bank of whomever he is buying stuff from. That's basically how most people view the banking system. But as you guys know from watching my videos, your friend and family member Fred is completely clueless. <laughs> they haven't even got an idea. So how it really works is the bank takes your money. And in this case, we'll use the example of Credit Suisse, everyone's favorite bank that basically just went bust. And Credit Suisse had a director there. Well, 
I don't know if it was two directors or one director. I'll let you be the judge. Let me explain. We've got Pippa right there on the left, and we also have Philip. Now, what is incredible is Pippa was named one of the top executives in all of Europe, one of the top women executives. But what's odd is Pippa is actually a dude 95% of the time. See, Pippa and Philip are one human being, although every morning they wake up and have to make a very important decision. Do I want to be a dude today or do I want to be a chick? So what they have done at Credit Suisse is they have just started calling this person Pips. So Pips takes your money and then allocates it to things that they deem appropriate to try to make a profit. So instead of taking your money and putting it in a vault, like your friend and family member Fred thinks, what Pip or what, what Pips was doing <laughs> with Credit Suisse is they were taking the customer deposits and they were creating derivatives. In fact, most likely derivatives with Deutsche Bank. They were taking that money and giving it to tech startups, which I am now calling tech blowups. I think a much more appropriate name, especially when you consider what happened <laughs> with Silicon Valley Bank. And they are giving it to everyone's favorite arms dealer, Aaron, who is doing business with Russia and Ukraine and most likely the United States all at the same time. Very entrepreneurial fellow is Aaron. But now what is happening is your friend and family member Fred <laughs> has dropped the six pack in the vape pen and has woken up to the insanity that is the current global banking system. He realizes that the bank isn't putting his money in a vault, that his currency units, his dollars are actually a liability of the banking system. And he is actually lending his money to them. And all he has in his checking account is nothing more than an IOU. So if this bank goes bust, poof, all of your friend and family member Fred's dollars are gone. But insert everyone's favorite evil James Bond villain, Klaus Schwab, the real life James Bond villain. And he says, listen, friend and family member Fred, don't you worry. See, we global elite central planners and authoritarians have a solution to your problem. See, right now you look at the banking system, and you're saying, boy, it's very fragile here, this fractional reserve stuff. This doesn't even make sense. Why would I put my hard-earned money with a bank that can go bust? But what we can do is we can take your dollars and we can just move them to the balance sheet of the one bank that can never, ever go bust. The central bank. Well, in the case of the United States, that would be the Federal Reserve. So, of course, your friend and family member Fred thinks this is a great idea because he can go back to drinking his beer, smoking his vape pen, and he doesn't have to worry about his bank going bust. But what he doesn't realize is the price he has paid for that little bit of safety, a little bit of security, is his freedom and his privacy. Let me explain further. Most of you know with Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, the depositors were bailed out even if their deposit account was over the FDIC limit of $250,000. So implicitly, what Janet Yellen did is said, okay, from now on, we are going to insure 100% of the deposits. But wait a minute, there's $18 trillion roughly in deposits right now with the commercial banking system. And the FDIC, as an example, probably has $150 billion. Now they basically have zero because they had to bail out Signature and Silicon Valley Bank. So how does that math work? Answer, it doesn't. And we've all heard how the mainstream media has talked about the depositors being insured moving forward. Regulators came in and said that depositors would be made whole regardless of how much money they have. Depositors should assume that their, that their deposits are safe. 
The only way to do that is to take those deposit liabilities, move them from the commercial banking system over to the Federal Reserve. And I know a lot of you right now are probably saying, okay, George, I get it. What's the big deal? Because once the individuals in the real economy, the entities, the businesses, the corporation, once they have an account at the Fed, that is a central bank digital currency. You see, there's a lot of confusion out there. Most people think that a central bank digital currency is this some other form of dollar. We'll call it Fed coin, and it's going to be competing with the dollars. And you have a choice. You can either use Fed coin or you can use dollars. This isn't the way it works. All a central bank currency is, is a dollar that is a direct liability of the Federal Reserve. So if your dollars go from being a liability of Wells Fargo, Chase, Bank of America, to a liability of the Fed, you, my friend, are now spending a central bank digital currency. In other words, money that can be tracked and money that is programmable. Dollars that are straight out of Orwell's 1984. So how do we push back against the global elite to make sure their dystopian objectives never turn into reality? So here's the good news. The Federal Reserve themselves admits that currently it is illegal for them to do business with individuals in the real economy, meaning that right now, as we speak, a central bank digital currency is illegal. Now, we have seen initiatives from politicians like Ron DeSantis and Ted Cruz to push back against a CBDC, but what they need to realize is this law is already on the books. So if we the people remain hyper vigilant to make sure they're not changing this law or breaking this law, the Klaus Schwab types will have a very difficult time implementing their Orwellian plan to control your money and to control your life while this crisis of 2023 plays out. For more content that'll help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks and big governments, check out this playlist right here. And I will see you on the next video.